Famous trainer Bob Harper recently had a heart attack, and it shocked a lot of people. And I think there are some real lessons that we can learn from this whole situation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you aren't caught up on this whole thing, let me give you some of the details. So Bob Harper had a heart attack on February 12th at the end of a workout. And luckily there were two doctors there at the gym. So they came in, they gave him CPR and they used the defibrillator a couple times until the paramedics got there. Then the paramedics gave him one last jolt with the defibrillator, took him to the hospital and he ended up actually being in a coma for two days before he woke up with the news that he had had a heart attack and gone into cardiac arrest. Now he's recently come out and given an update on how how he's doing with his recovery. He's in cardiac rehab. He's taking the steps he needs to take with his doctor's supervision to get himself back on track and recover from this whole ordeal. And according to him, the type of heart attack he had has about a 6% survival rate. And of course, I wish Bob the best in his recovery. And the point of this video isn't to like look at him and pick him apart and all that kind of stuff because I've seen some of that type of thing floating around. And honestly, it's not too pretty. But what I really want to talk about is people's reaction, the shock that a lot lot of people experienced when they heard that Bob Harper had a heart attack. And honestly, I was shocked by this whole thing too. Now, part of that is because Bob is 51. So for anyone to have a heart attack at the age of 51 is not typical, no matter what the circumstances are. But a lot of the discussion I've seen on TV and online has also been wrapped up in this idea that, you know, Bob is the picture perfect model of health. Bob is this person that we see on TV all the time talking about health and wellness and fitness. He has abs. So how could something like this happen? And so for me, I saw this as a great opportunity for us to chat about one of the biggest misconceptions around health. And that is that you can tell what someone's health is by the way that they look. And I hate to break it to you, but abs don't equal health. And I think it's so important for us to talk about this because so often we see physical appearance held up as the evidence that someone is healthy or unhealthy, and that simply isn't accurate. So the first part of this is that you can't tell what someone is doing or not doing by the way that they look. When you just look at someone, you don't know what their habits are, you don't know what their life is like. And people are different. So some people are naturally thinner, some people are naturally fatter, some people are more muscular, muscular or less muscular or more flexible or less flexible just the same way as some people are taller and some people are shorter or some people can sing really well and some people can't sing that well. It all has to do with the natural variation from person to person where you're not all the same. Some people are never going to have visible abs unless they start doing some really unhealthy things to their body. And some people can get visible abs really easily just because that's how their body is built. And even with someone who shares a lot of things publicly, it's still impossible to really know what that person is doing and what they aren't doing. The next thing we need to talk about is that health is complex. Even if you do know what someone is doing, I think a lot of times people want to think of health as just exercise or just food or maybe food and exercise, but really it's a lot more than that. With Bob, for example, I think we can say that he is a fit person based on what we've seen from him. Now, of course, we don't know everything like I mentioned before, but I'm pretty confident in saying that he is physically fit. But health isn't just about how much weight you squat or how fast you can run or whether or not you can touch your toes. Those things are part of health, but there are a lot of other things that make up health as well, including your stress and stress management, your sleep, your mental health, your personal relationships. All of those things come together to make this full picture. And there are a lot of other things in the mix too. When we talk about health, we have to look at all of those pieces working together. And we also have to make sure that we're not sacrificing one for the other, because you see that a lot of times where people will focus on just the food or just the exercise and then they miss all of these other parts that are so important. And I'm not saying that's the case with Bob, because like I said, I don't have any idea what Bob's life is like, but I do want to bring it up because I think it's something important for all of us to remember. Another thing we need to talk about is the fact that our health isn't 100% in our control. The way some of these health and fitness people talk, you would think that they had found the secret to immortality, but Bob has said that he has a history of heart disease and that his mother actually died of a heart attack. So we have to recognize that there are genetic components at work here too. Some some of us just naturally have a higher risk or a lower risk for certain conditions and diseases compared to everyone else, and there's nothing we can do about that. We've all seen those news reports with the 100-year-old person talking about how they smoke two packs
packs of cigarettes a day and they never eat broccoli. But that doesn't mean that cigarettes are the key to longevity or that broccoli is a real killer. All it means is that we are all different. Some people are just naturally going to live longer than others. Some things affect some people and don't really affect other people. Health guidelines are based on what is generally best for the overall population. But of course, there are going to be some people who are outliers at either end. That's why it's so important to check in with your doctor from time to time to get your blood sugar checked, your blood pressure or whatever. And then if something isn't quite right, you can start figuring out what exactly is going on and what can be done about it. And I think some people find this whole genetics thing discouraging because they feel like, well, if my genetics are still at play here and there's nothing I can do about it, then what is the point of taking care of my body in the first place? And to that I say, first off, it isn't only genetics that matter. That's not what I said. I said the genetics play a part, but what you're doing, your lifestyle, your habits, all of those things still play a huge role here. So yes, the genetics are a thing, but they aren't the whole picture. What you're doing still matters. We can't predict the future or rewrite the past. We can't like set up a bunch of simulations and say, okay, what if you eat this or do this exercise and then like run them all out to the end and see what's going to happen and say, okay, you need to go this way. That's just not how it works. And with someone like Bob, for example, we don't know. What if he hadn't been physically active for the majority of his life? Maybe things actually could have been worse. Maybe he would have had a heart attack sooner. Maybe he wouldn't have survived this heart attack. Maybe his recovery would be more difficult if he wasn't as physically fit as he seems to be. And another thing to remember with this whole genetics thing is that living a healthy lifestyle isn't about getting a gold star or being immortal, and it isn't even all about preventing disease. Taking care of your body is also about feeling good right now, feeling good as you move through your life so that you can enjoy all that life has to offer. So yes, take care of your body to prevent disease, but also take care of your body so you will be more resilient when things aren't going great because life isn't perfect, things do happen, so whether it's emotional stress or physical stress, something like Bob is going through right now, take care of yourself so when those things do come up, you'll be better prepared to deal with it. And also take care of yourself so that when times are good, you can enjoy them even more. And let me know in the comments, when you first heard that Bob had had a heart attack, were you surprised? What did you think about it? And also, did it start to maybe challenge some of your ideas about what health really is? And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info, and healthy recipes, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.